Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Fetchark Recon HD, a set of relatively budget-friendly goggles that are using the Avatar HD FPV system by Walksnail slash Cadix FPV. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over their features and specs, point out the differences between these goggles and the two other available options for the Avatar HD system, and provide you with my feedback after testing out these goggles for the last two weeks or so. First of all, in terms of packaging, the Recon HD goggles come inside this box, and inside you can find, along with the goggles, a quick start guide, fetch hog stickers, a cleaning cloth, a 1 meter long DC cable, and pay attention that the input voltage equals to the output voltage, and a foam piece for the nose area. You should pay attention that these goggles don't feature an internal battery and an external one is not included in the set and while over here it states that the supported DC input voltage is between 7 to 24 volts, the online specs indicate that the supported DC input voltage is between 7 to 21 volts, so I recommend to be conservative and power these goggles with between 2 to 5S batteries. In terms of the other features and specs, the Recon HD goggles feature four internal high beam directional antennas and in case you would really like to, you can replace two of the directional antennas with external omnidirectional or directional antennas, but it will require you to perform some modifications. On the right side of the goggles, you can find the navigation joystick, the bind button, and a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeters barrel DC plug. On the top side, you can find ventilation holes, the back button, record button, and two plastic parts which are blocked. So as I've mentioned earlier, if you would like to use external antennas, you will need to modify these goggles and cut through these plastic parts and add external SMA or RPSMA antenna connectors. On the left side of the goggles, you can find the fan, on the bottom side, a USB Type-C port, which is used for displaying the video of the goggles on an external screen. So you will need to either use a USB Type-C to an HDMI cable and use a monitor with HDMI input, or use a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable and connect it to an external screen that has a USB Type-C input port. In addition, over here, you can find a micro SD card slot. It supports up to 256 gigabytes micro SD card and it is used for storing your DVR files and updating the firmware of the goggles. Finally, these goggles are using a single 4 inch 1080p 60 frames per second display and it is using a mirror and Fresnel lens in order to reflect the same image to each eye. In terms of weight, the Recon HD goggles weigh 327.9 grams and in comparison, the Walksnail slash Dominator HD goggles weigh 339.5 grams. When connecting the goggles to a power source, they are going to be immediately turned on as they don't feature an on and off switch. As you can hear, the fan immediately kicks in and as far as I can tell, you won't be able to turn it off. And according to my test, the power consumption of the goggles is 8.4 watts regardless whether a VTX is connected or not. As for the user interface, it is almost identical to the one which is used by the Avatar VRX and HD goggles, and the main difference is that you won't be able to switch to high frame rate mode since the 4-inch display doesn't support 100 frames per second mode and it is limited to 60 frames per second. Now, as for the differences between the Recon HD, HD, and Avatar VRX, starting with pricing, the HD goggles are currently on sale for $480. The Avatar VRX cost $219 on its own, so it's no longer on sale for $99, but it can be cheaper if you are going to bundle it with an Avatar VTX. And currently, the Recon HD goggles cost $279. As for the other differences, the Avatar VRX is a standalone VRX, so you'll need to use it with an external display. 
you'll also be able to easily change the two omnidirectional antennas using these two LP SMA antenna connectors. It was on sale for $99, which was a bargain, but currently it cost $219. However, it can be cheaper if you are going to bundle it with an Avatar VTX. As for the main differences between the Recon HD and the HD goggles, on the HD goggles you'll be able to change all the antennas as they feature four individual RPSMA antenna connectors. You'll also be able to adjust the speed of the built-in fan. And most important, the HD goggles feature two individual 1080p 120 frames per second display, which are going to provide you with a higher field of view of 46 degrees in comparison to 44 degrees on the Recon HD. And you'll also be able to adjust the focal length and IPD. In addition, while you won't be able to use your prescription glasses with the HD goggles, you will be able to use them along with the Recon HD goggles. However, personally, I find that if your prescription strength is not very high, for example, mine is minus two, I was able to comfortably use them even without wearing my glasses. As for which option is better for you, there are a couple of aspects that you need to consider and I guess that it really depends on your needs. For example, in case you own the new HD0 goggles and you would like to use the Avatar system, I think that your best option would be to go with the Avatar via Rigs as the new goggles are going to enable you to fully enjoy the system. However, in case you own an older set of goggles, my advice is in case you can afford it, you should probably go with one of the Walksnail compatible goggles. When deciding which goggles are better for you, keep in mind that, as I've mentioned earlier, the Recon HD are limited to 60 frames per second. For freestyle, it's going to be okay, but in case you would like to do some racing with the Walksnail system, your better option is to go with the goggles. I also think that the goggles are a bit more comfortable and I also experienced some light leak with the Recon HD, which I haven't experienced with the Avatar HD goggles. But although I haven't tested it, it can be probably fixed using a better piece of foam. In addition, in case you have custom prescription and you are not able to adjust the focal length using diopter adapters, such as the ones which are used by the Avatar HD goggles, going with the Recon HD goggles is going to be a better option since it will allow you to use it with your glasses. And finally, in case you are going to conduct long range flights, going with the Avatar HD or the Avatar via Rigs is going to be a better option because they will allow you to swap the antennas easily. And you can also mount the Avatar via Rigs on a very high tripod and connect it to an external screen or FPV goggles. As for updating the firmware of the Recon HD, it's done in the same manner that is used by the Avatar via Rigs and HD goggles. So you'll need to place the firmware file on the root folder of the micro SD card. And after powering the goggles, you will need to long press the bind button for about seven seconds. Keep in mind that the process is going to take about 10 minutes. So I suggest using a fully charged battery. And on top of that, make sure to use the correct firmware. So overall, after testing out the FedShock Recon HD goggles, I think that these goggles will be a good option in case you're looking for a budget-friendly set of goggles for the Avatar HD system. In my opinion, they are quite comfortable and my only complaint is that I experienced some light leak and I hope to find a better piece of foam so it will make sure that the light is not going to leak from the sides and also from the nose area. I also think that the picture quality is good. The field of view is big, but not too big, which is also an important aspect because in my experience, having a too big FOV is not good because you are not going to be able to focus on the entire screen. And again, overall, I think that for $270, you are getting a pretty good value for money. So these goggles are definitely something that you might want to consider in case you would like to use the Avatar HD system. 
especially if you don't have any previous equipment and you're starting from scratch. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. I wish you all happy flying and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.